Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you a massive book haul. These books have been acquired over a few months. I've been just putting off filming this video but there are a lot of books here and I just need to do it. So let's get right down to the books that I've recently hauled in. My buying ban is over and that has definitely contributed. So the first book I have here is a book that I picked up from work and I don't always show on video when I haul in books from work but I'm very very excited about this book in particular and that is Family Law by Elizabeth Acevedo. I have read every single one of Elizabeth Acevedo's books and I really really love them all. She's a fantastic author and this is her adult debut fiction. I work for Canongate which is the publisher for this book and I've been working on the campaign for this. I got very emotional when I saw that my name was in the acknowledgements and so yes I'm very excited for this one to be out there in the world and I just wanted to mention it in this video because yes I was lucky enough blessed enough to be invited to the influencer event for Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare this is her debut adult fantasy novel and this is a hardcover exclusive proof number 54 out of 100 I believe I got to meet Cassandra Clare and get it signed she was absolutely lovely and it was interesting to hear the story behind this book this is like a Jewish fantasy book and it just seems like it's going to be a fun fantasy world. The first one in a series, so excited to hear that she was doing adult fantasy in an entirely new world because it felt like something I could dive back into her writing with and I'm looking forward to giving it a go. I, unless I say otherwise, please consider these books from publishers that come up next. So thank you to the publisher for Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry, which is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. I haven't read the synopsis of this one because I still need to get to Legends and Lattes. I feel so disappointed in myself because of that, but I'm hoping to spend some time trying out lattes for the first time in cafes and reading both of these books and that sounds like it would be a lot of fun as a reading vlog idea so I'm very much looking forward to getting to this series it's just been so hyped and I know so many people love it. I also have two proofs so the first one is The Atlas Paradox by Olivier Blake and then also Masters of Death by Olivier Blake. These are fantasy ones this is the sequel to The Atlas 6 which I don't have and I haven't read but I would like to read now after enjoying her young adult contemporaries so when I got this in a uh, gift bag from one of the influencer events that I was invited to. I thought I'll hold on to it and keep it. Masters of Death and that's because it just sounded so very good. So we've got an estate agent who is also a vampire I believe and she discovers that the house that she is trying to sell is haunted. So she hires someone to exercise the building so that she can sell it and she doesn't realize that the person that she's hired to exercise the building is a fraud. So that's not gonna go down well and I wanted to read this because it sounds like vampires and haunted houses and exorcisms which is absolutely my cup of tea. Also finally got Children of Time by Adrian Chavotsky. I've met Adrian Chavotsky twice now and each time that he's spoken at these MCM Comic Con events he sounds like a master of world building and his thought process between creating worlds and working on multiple books at once just sounds fascinating to me and I really respect him as an author and I think it's about time that I read one of his books and one of his most famous series is the Children of Time series which is also known for being a sci-fi that largely has to do with spiders and my greatest fear in existence in this world is of spiders so reading about the thing that scares me most that should be fine, right? <laughs> oh, I was sent a proof copy of Before We Say Goodbye by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, who is the author of, well, this is the fourth book in the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. It's been translated into English, and it's about this very cute coffee shop in Japan where if you sit at a specific table, you can travel back in time, and you've got until the coffee gets cold in that time. You've got to stay seated in that chair, and whatever you do there doesn't impact the future. So everything that you have that encountered that you have when you go back stays in the past. So I read the first one and I really really enjoyed it and I think it's fantastic and I'm currently reading the second one so I'm looking forward to just getting further and further on in this series. Everything the Darkness Eats by Eric LaRocca, a very well-known horror short story author. I read Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke last October and it was fantastic and such a good creepy collection and I'm currently reading The Trees Died Because I Bled There which is another one of Eric's collections so I'm very much 
interested in reading more and more of their short stories. Yeah, so this becomes the otherwise. My book buying ban ended and I got myself some books from the works. So the first one was actually gifted to me by someone from work who was unhauling it and that's Set on You by Amy Leah. So when I went into the works I got the sequel X's and O's and I'm actually most excited to read X's and O's because people say that this is where the romance is really really good and it's really cute and kicks off but this is the first in the series and it has a bit more to do with like working out culture. I don't actually know much about these other than they are romances that are all over the romance book reading world and people say they're really cute and that's really all I need to know that I want to read a romance that it's popular and cute. We are back to books from publishers again for the foreseeable future. So we have Fake Dates and Mooncakes by Sher Lee and this is a young adult baking fake dating romance. Yes, those are just basically all my buzzwords back to back. Dylan thinks it'd be helping their family business if they won a mooncake baking contest and then there comes in like Theo who somehow Dylan agrees to fake date him for a family wedding situation and combined with the wedding drama there's the baking drama it just sounds like it's going to be full of drama and I'm always I'm always here for that with romance books. This proof is of Let Us Descend by Jasmine Ward and Jasmine Ward is the author of Sing Unburied Sing just the amount of times that Jasmine Ward's Sing Unburied Sing has been recommended to me is unbelievable and so while I don't have that book I do have this one which is an upcoming book that's coming out in October and the proof quote that's on the cover here says the first weapon I held was my mother's hand oh my goodness what a quote so as soon as I heard about that I just wanted to give this one a go I really can't wait to soak in some beautiful writing and as long as I love this one I'm very much looking forward to diving into more of this author's works I do feel like we'd be an easy pairing I couldn't make the event unfortunately because I was at a different event of the same night but they nonetheless sent me a copy of Sing Me to Sleep by Gabby Burton which is a, I think it's a young adult or maybe it's an adult like fantasy that I'm very 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 excited for it's about a black siren and she has been like singing men to their death and doing what sirens do but to stay undercover she decides to walk on land and enter into the business of the guarding the palace but she gets assigned to be the guard of the prince who tasks her with hunting down the monster that is killing all the men in this area which is herself. So that's what the plot of this one is and I was already sold when you said black sirens because anything to do with sirens, mermaids, especially making them black, I will be there for it, I will read it and I will consume it and so I was very excited about this one and the fact that she's hunting herself, I don't know how she's going to solve that conundrum so I've got to read it, i got to read to find out. I have a copy of The Roughest Draft by Emily Wibberley and Austin Siegmund Barocca. And this sounds like it's going to be one of those really nice romances that I would read on the beach for the summer. I really like the idea. So this is about two authors who co-wrote a best-selling book that everybody adored and they were fantastic. But quietly behind the scenes they fell out with each other and they've ended their writing partnership. But there is just one issue. They still have a book on contract which means they have to work together to write one more book as they signed to do. I'm so excited for this so very much a thank you to the publisher for my week with him by Joya Goffney who is the author of Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry which happens to be one of the best young adult contemporary books out there that I absolutely adored reading last year. So in this one we're following our female character who is fed up of living in Texas and she wants to quit Texas and just go and spend time in California. That's where she wants to be. She's going to like just run away and go there. However, she doesn't account for her best friend Mal who decides to, who manages to convince her to spend a week with him and he is going to try his best to show her all the reasons why she should stay in Texas. And maybe, just maybe, feelings will bloom between these best friends. I am a big fan of the friends to lovers trope. It is basically my favourite romance trope, even above fake dating. So that is one of the main reasons I want to read it. And it's by Joey Goffney, who I know writes wonderfully. I will read it. Yes, yes, yes. Also, I was sent Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. Camp Damascus is a conversion therapy camp that's set in the middle of wilderness. We know about these kind of camps. They are horrible. They are terrible. And this is a horror book that it's about that, but it's also not about that. It's about a God-fearing young lady who can't stop throwing up flies. It's about these visions that she has of an old woman in the woods with a sagging face. 
and maybe just maybe it is about Camp Damascus as well. So that is what the synopsis tells me. It sounds like it's going to be a horror read for more reasons than one and I'm curious. I was sent a copy of Her Good Side by Rebecca Weatherspoon. The reviews have come trickling in from black young adult contemporary readers like me and they've all been loving this book. We've got this main character here who even though she's self-assured and very confident in herself she's a bit of a late bloomer in terms of the dating game and she tentatively agrees to go on a date with her best friend's boyfriend. I don't know how that works but that's what it says. And then we've also got Jacob who you can see on the cover here as well and he has gone through two breakups and he's starting to think that he is the problem in the relationship. So both of them basically want to get better at dating for their own personal reasons and they decide they can date together like fake date go on pretend dates so that they can get better and be prepared for when they're going to go on actual real life dates a bit of practice so they can get going it's kind of the fake dating trope and people say it's really cute and sweet okay so i want to read it as well i'm so basic aren't i just give me horror just give me fake dating and i will read the book right so we've got some books here that i got from treat your shells who was doing an unhaul i've met her before and she's lovely and she is quite like me in terms of reading books and cycling them out hauling them in and things are moving through her shelf so i picked up from her people person by candice carty williams which i was really glad to get a secondhand copy of it is the one with sprayed Edges and it's signed by the author so those are pleasant surprises. I read Queenie I think last month as of me filming this and it took me by surprise with how much I really enjoyed reading that book. I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did and since then I've been meaning to well I want to read her next books her other books as well so that's why I got People Person. I don't need to know that much about it because I just want to read something more by this author and similarly I've been recommended Nightcrawling by Layla Motley multiple times. People say it's very much an Olivia Savannah book and so I'm taking that recommendation when Sh Shannon was unhauling it I decided to pick it up and I don't really know that much about it I feel like at some point I did but that's okay gonna pick it up gonna read it and see if I like it as everyone says I should I was sent a finished copy of Thief Liar Lady by D.L. Soria. I've hauled in the proof before, but in case you missed that haul, I will repeat what it's about because it sounds fantastic. And so you know the story of Cinderella, but imagine if Cinderella actually ended the way that it did because Cinderella used magic to manipulate her way into the prince falling in love with her and becoming princess in the palace with the help of her stepsisters. And so all of that's already happened when we start this book and we're now into the part where Cinderella is a princess but the magic that she's been using to keep the prince under his spell is starting to wane and her stepsisters are with her in the palace but maybe things are going wrong with their dynamic and Cinderella is trying to hold it all together as a war approaches their kingdom so what i really like about this is how it turns the story of cinderella on its head how it's got female friendships rather than a dislike situation between the stepsisters and the fact that cinderella is a bit of a manipulative woman appeals to me so very much okay so this is one more book that i picked up in the works and that is the comeback by lily chu i read the stand-in by lily chu last september and it was fantastic and i really just i really really enjoyed that book i related to the main character i thought it had a cute romance to it it was one of those celeb normal person romances with I think fake dating to it as well and I was surprised by how much it was about identity and understanding who you are which actually it also makes sense that it was about that because she was doing a body switch with another celebrity as well there's a lot in that book but it was just so very well written and very cute and I really liked the relationship as well so I knew that I wanted to read more by this author when I heard that her second book was coming out in physical form because I think they are audible originals or at least the first one was and I don't really know that much about about this book it was more so I read something by this author it seems like it's going to be a similar vein and I just wanted more very excited for this thank you to the publisher for Spirits Abroad by Zen Cho Zen Cho is the author of Blackwater Sister which I read when it came out and I absolutely loved and I recommend to absolutely everybody but Spirits Abroad is her short story collection and it's a collection rich in myth magic and folklore especially east asian myth magic and folklore i love a good short story i haven't read that many fantasy short stories i feel like that's much rarer to see and i'm looking forward to seeing it and experimenting and trying that form of short stories for the first time much ado about nada by 
Uzma Jalaluddin. I read Aisha at Last by this author and to this day it still stands as one of my all-time favourite Pride and Prejudice retellings which is a romance one. It's got Muslim representation and I just thought it was basically the best one ever done and it also kind of mixes in some of the Shakespeare themes to the Pride and Prejudice retelling elements which oh, was done so well and absolutely sounds like my cup of tea so when I heard that she was coming out with a much ado about nothing retelling a play that I really like and it's got main characters who are Muslim and on the cover it says two exes one chance meeting a summer they will never forget just give it to me. We have also The God of Good Looks by Brianne MC Iver. I've been seeing this one all over Instagram and, very, and thank you very much to Viking for sending it to me. I was recently talking to someone online about how I don't read enough Caribbean fiction that's not about Jamaica which of course I have a personal investment in. So I was like, oh, I need to read something about like other islands and then this just landed on my door and it was perfect. So this is set in Trinidad and Tobago, I believe it is. And it's about this woman who wants to be a writer but through a series of events, she kind of falls into the beauty and makeup industry and maybe she doesn't have the hard skin that she thought she did to fight against the beauty ideals that Trinidad and Tobago is kind of cramming down her neck, that the elite are cramming down her neck. And I I think there's also a romance and a like relationship happening underneath it all and it's one of those books that's quite a commercial in theme but I've heard that the writing is just beautiful and so very well done which is giving me you made a fool of death with your beauty vibes mmm I could hide that I won a giveaway. I won a giveaway over on Twitter and it was Sarah Barnard's giveaway where she was giving away only a copy of Where the Light Goes, which is her latest young adult contemporary book. And when she was like, oh, what's your address and everything? I let her know my address, but I also told her I'm a big fan of the books of hers that I have read and I just want to like read through her entire backlist. And she was like, all right, would you mind if I just sent you a couple of other books in as well? And I thought, oh, of course I wouldn't mind. So she also very kindly sent me Fierce Fragile Hearts and Destination Anywhere, which are two books from her backlist. But I'm telling you, Sarah Barnard must have some like magical powers because she sent me the only two books of hers that I don't already own, completing my Sarah Barnard collection. So I now own all of Sarah Barnard's books from this giveaway. So I'm very chuffed and very happy. They're all young adult contemporary books. And I think she just writes characters that are really realistic teenagers, but are also oftentimes dealing with quite big life change moments or very significant happenings. She does it so well. So yes, very excited to read all three of these. Kamigawa Food Detectives is a translated fiction book. And it's about these this restaurant, which is a small restaurant. And in this restaurant, they are very good at recreating a dish from your history from your past. It unlocks forgotten memories and emotions that you didn't know you had from eating that dish and they call themselves the food detectives. There's a cat on the cover, it sounds really cute, kind of similar in the vein of before the coffee gets cold so I wanted to give it a try as well. So now we have two Australian books and sometimes with Australian books it can be really hard to get them overseas and not within Australia due to rights and how the publishing world works but these are two books that I really really fell in love with when I was in Australia for a year and so I'm very happy and thankful to my friend who helped me buy these when my buying ban ended. So the first one is These Wild Houses by Omar Sakar, which I really struggled to get a copy of. And it is basically one of my favorite poetry collections of all time. I just think it's absolutely fantastic. And Omar Sakar has such a way with words and with imagery that really just, it struck a chord with me. And since then I've already read more of his poetry, but this collection in particular was really hard to get my hands on. And this was the first one of his that I read. So I really, really wanted it for my collection. And then the other one was Eggshell Skull by Brie Lee. And this is a memoir about, well, a sexual assault case. So in this we follow Brie Lee and she becomes the person who like helps a judge with their case in, in an internship kind of position. And her judge tends to work on the sexual assault cases. And even though she's happy to be doing this work and making a change, she sees so much injustice in the courtroom. And she talks about that, but she also talks about this weird feeling she gets when she watches these these, these uh, cases unfold and she realizes that she is being triggered because she has had her own sexual assault in the past and the memories come back and then she goes through her own trial and it's about that as well and I think 
If you've read books like The Secret Barrister and also Know My Name by Chanel Miller, but you kind of want to have an understanding of what the law system is like in Australia, which is different from how it's like in the US and the UK, and also how sexual assault cases go on in Australia, which again is slightly different from the US and the UK, but you also get to see some of the overlapping elements of how things are the same even in Australia and it talks a bit about what it's like to be a woman going through these cases but also what it's like to be someone who's indigenous and a person of colour with Australia's history too so I just thought it was a very insightful one I learned a lot it was emotional but I also think it was a really important story and I did want to add this one to my non-fiction memoir collection on my shelves. We have Kismat Connection by Nanya Devarajan. I'm laughing because of the fact that this is also fake dating and I'm really just so blatantly myself <laughs> in this whole, maybe I should do a fake dating reading vlog where I just read all these books that I recently got with fake dating in them because I am just going hard on this trope. Other than the friends to lovers it is my favourite trope and this combines friends to lovers and fake dating because this character here has always had her star chart read for her and it says that her family's legacy for her is that her first love, the person she will be with all her life, is the first boyfriend she will ever have. And she doesn't want that, she wants to have more relationships, she decides what she's going to do is she's going to defy the stars by fake dating her best friend because that is the one boy she will never fall for. Do you think that's going to work out for her? So this is what that book is about. And I'm, I'm gonna read it. Oh, we have The Girl Who Grew Wings by Anna Waterworth. I believe this is middle grade or like young, young adults, somewhere in that age range. And it's a retelling of the myth of Icarus who flew too close to the sun, but I believe it's gender swapped. So we are following Icarai instead. And yeah, it sounds like it does things slightly differently from the myth that we all know, but I was looking forward to seeing kind of some of that Greek mythology retelling done for a younger age audience. I mostly see it done in adult and upper young adult fiction, so be curious to see how it turns out in The Girl Who Grew Wing. We have Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington. So this is kind of described to me or pitched to me as The Inheritance Games meets Squid Game with a dose of The Bachelor, a deadly thriller. So. That's quite a mix of things and I'm curious to see how it's going to turn out but what happens is Adina is voted is invited to join in with these games and the prize for these games is everything that she's ever wished for but while she's there slowly the contestants start to die which is giving me the Squid Game elements and while I haven't finished Squid Game I'm kind of somewhere in the middle with it I'm curious, I'm curious. So we have Girls of Little Hope which is by Sam Beckenbessinger and Dale Halvors Halvorsen and this is a young adult creepy book where these three girls as you can see on the cover of the on the milk carton they go into the woods one day and they are looking for clues for this mysterious mystery but when they come out of the woods one of them is missing one of them can't remember anything and the other is pretending as if she doesn't remember anything but is feeling the pressure from her hyper-religious family who are wanting answers everybody's wanting answers but the missing girl may be dead or she may be still out there in the woods experiencing a living nightmare by herself. So I picked this one up because it just sounded so entertaining and it was giving me Artemis Fowl vibes. So that is Start a Villain by John Scalzi who I know now is like a very well-known author but I didn't know when I picked this book up and it's about someone who inherits their mysterious uncle's supervillain business, yes, and it's more complicated than you might imagine to inherit a supervillain business all of a sudden, especially when the business involves sentient language using cyber cats, and they are part of the management. <laughs> so it just sounds like it's going to be funny and silly but also like it could do sci-fi things really entertainingly while also being like super villain crime. I do miss a good super villain. There are those really dark obviously super villain people. I love the morally grey characters and the anti-heroes but I do miss just like villain hero duality. So then we have Unquiet by E. Saxe. It's going to be a creepy gothic kind of read, very traditional gothic when I say that because our main character is mourning the death of her brother-in-law and when one day she finds her brother-in-law alive but also very confused as to how he died, she decides that she's going to travel to the scene of where he died to find out 
what exactly happened and she leaves the little western jewish community that she's been part of for her whole life and grown up within to go and do this exploring and maybe the things that she finds are quite surprising and secrets are unburied that she did not expect and there you have it those are all of the books i feel like we've been here for a while and i've talked a lot but please let me know in the comment section down below have you read any of these are you excited for any of these books or what was the latest book you bought received borrowed or acquired give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and don't you forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time i have a new video and you know what they say onwards and upwards excelsior